Welcome to MuggleCast, your weekly ride into the Wizarding World fandom. I'm Andrew. I'm Eric. I'm Micah. And I'm Laura. And on this week's episode, we're going to be locking in our predictions for Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. This is our last chance to set all of our theories in stone ahead of seeing the movie. Uh, I think Micah and I are seeing it Wednesday. Get this, y'all. Eric has already seen the movie. It's true. Uh, but just <laughs> just two days, just the day before last, there was a surprise opportunity, and I took it. So I will not be leaving my predictions for this movie in here because, uh, you know, but I will be cheering you guys on in your predictions. Oh, thank yes. you. And, and Keep the secrets, Eric. Eric did want to get his predictions in. But I was like, if you're getting your, if you say your predictions after seeing the movie, I'm afraid people are going to be like second guessing everything you yeah, say and trying to read yeah. between the lines. It's and, best if I recuse myself uh, from this yeah. episode, I'll, as as well planned as it was. I'm very excited about the topics and the questions specifically. We're actually bringing a lot of questions back from our Crimes of Grindelwald predictions episode, Andrew. You yeah. did really good work there finding those. Thanks. We dived back into the archive we put we keep all of our planning docs in uh, google drive so they never disappear eric did you get a keep the secrets button sticker t-shirt i did not get a keep the secrets button there was a, a an opportunity to get like a double-sided 27 by 40 poster but uh if you guys have seen my room on a, on a good day i don't have room for that so i did not grab that <laughs> But uh, yeah, no buttons. Look what I found the other day, a protect the secrets Ooh. button. Oh, <laughs> man. Grindelwald. I love how they didn't do keep the secrets like Cursed Child. It was protect the secrets. <laughs> That's right. So this year it's going to be hide the secrets. <laughs> secret the secrets for secrets of Dumbledore. <laughs> keep the secrets secret. <laughs> Shout out to Father Atlas in our Discord who says Eric's face is now a spoiler warning. Wow. That's rough. <laughs> that puts a because, lot of faith in me. Because of his reactions to our predictions. Oh, oh right. Maybe I should just like randomize mask it, over Eric. my face or something. No, no, no. Time. You should just randomize your reactions <laughs> so we don't really know if what we're saying is true. Oh, okay. I'll try. <laughs> I'll yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> or just that face the whole time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, Eric, well, let's just, since we're on the topic, um, what did you think of the movie? And yeah, I wrote down... Keep uh, it spoiler-free, obviously, for all of us. Yeah, yeah. You you asked me to do like a vague spoiler-free review for anybody who's not sure if I can keep that together. Just fast forward like 60 seconds. Um, but here, <laughs> I'll give you a minute to do that. Okay, here's what I wrote down. Spoiler-free. For whatever reasons, this is a better movie than Crimes of Grindelwald. And my impression Ooh. of the movie overall is more positive then it is negative. There are surprises, which is nice. I think Steve Clovis' work on the screenplay must have been a good thing overall, and the musical score for this movie is a highlight for me. Uh, it's good to see the characters we know, or the actors acting the characters that we know again. There will definitely be things that we as fans of the franchise dislike, and issues we have from all these Beasts sequels overall, but it's a better entry than the second film film overall i did like it okay i love that you prepared a statement and wow that was that was really good and yeah i don't think we need to edit out any of that okay <laughs> that's great. encouraging awesome. let me ask I have to you be this. honest with y'all um my showing still only only me and mark have seats we checked it yesterday Mm -hmm. um still no one else has booked tickets for the showing we're going to it's kind of a tumultuous yeah. time but like we're all seeing it within the next like week right because these early fan screenings basically laura's going uh, to a I'm, normal one right yeah. i'm going to a normal one on thursday night the 14th oh okay um i'm not going to a fan screening okay well and kind of as a disclaimer like how i got into a screening two days ago uh was being part of a fan group on facebook and had nothing to do with MuggleCast, nothing to do with MuggleNet. But Warner Brothers is inviting fans out, encouraging them to cosplay, and then taking photos. I actually won the costume contest, oh, or third place in the costume you? contest in my theater. Harry Potter. Oh. Like, I, I, I brought out the Gryffindor robes. I uh, well Meg used a ballpoint pen on my forehead, drew a scar, and I had a black wig. I was going to say. Nice. Um, yeah. It, it's, it's telling that Warner Brothers has to really invite fans out to go see these movies. Uh, but Eric, I actually have a question for you, and, and I don't think this is spoilery at all. Um, you, in fact, mentioned mm -hmm. that you brought Mads Mikkelsen home with you. Um, his portrayal, oh. do you feel like there was any kind of 
gap between Johnny Depp and him stepping into the role. No larger a gap than the fact that the plot of this movie is different than the plot of the second movie. You know what I'm saying? It's just like Johnny Depp was the right Grindelwald for the second movie. And I feel like Mads is as good for what he's doing in this movie. Let me ask you this. How many episodes of MuggleCast does this movie buy us? That's a great question. <laughs> I was I was thinking about this. I think we could we could do character episodes. So those are coming back. Mm -hmm. The overall reactions, I would say, is probably two episodes. And then there's an episode on we could do one that's like the state of the franchise where we talk about whether this movie was an ending, which we speculated about before, um, Mm -hmm. but also what we still don't like that the film continues to do, which I think there's an episode there. So maybe I'd say overall a dozen episodes or so. Yes. Yes. It's good okay. stuff. Sounds yeah, it's, good. It's good. It's good talk <laughs> stuff. The stuff we've been yeah. talking about, we can we can pick apart the movie. It's not so bad that we have to do the initial two episodes and then run for two years like we did for Crimes of Grindelwald. <laughs> we just didn't <laughs> talk about it. Um, this is going to be better for for conversing about like in the era that the movie is like available on streaming and stuff. Cool. Cool. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing all that. And we'll get to our predictions in a moment, but wanted to give people a couple of reminders before we continue. If you're new to MuggleCast, make sure you're following the show for free in your favorite podcast app so you never miss an episode. And if you want to help us make all this great content every week, visit patreon.com slash MuggleCast to support us. We would really appreciate that. And to thank you for your support, we'll send you physical gifts and all kinds of cool digital benefits throughout the year. And... Next week's episode of MuggleCast will actually be Quizage Live, and we will be recording Quizage Live. This is going to be a a fantastic beast edition, Saturday, April 9th at 11 a.m. Eastern. This will be open to everybody. This is a free, real-time trivia game. You're going to be able to compete against your fellow fans, your fellow MuggleCast listeners in real time. More instructions will be available on our social media channels in the days ahead. But again, we would love to see you at Quizich Live this Saturday, April 9th at 11 a.m. Eastern. Prizes for Quizich Live. The top five winners will receive $40 to cover two tickets to Secrets of Dumbledore. And we're going to donate $40 to one of four charities. Uh, You pick which one we will donate to. And our goal with this Quizich Live is to kind of is to help you remember everything that's gone on in the Fantastic Beasts series so far. And then the episode after that will be our first of a dozen, (laughs) according to Eric, Secrets of Dumbledore discussions. For sure. And if you want to see how this uh, looks uh, between your phone and the computer, we have our previous Quizich Lives are on YouTube and on the MuggleCast site where you've been submitting Quizich every week. If you scroll down to the bottom, there's all the YouTube playlists of all of our previous quiz shows. They're actually a lot of fun and very entertaining. We do a great job of bantering in between questions and tracking the leaderboards, watching people who start high and go low, start low, make a comeback is all very exciting yeah. and fun. So yeah. We've been uh, buying this great trivia system. And again, thanks to our patrons, they help us buy things like this to help us run the show. And it's it's worked out really well. The one thing I will say, though, is that um, I don't know that any of us has ever achieved the level of Chris Rankin being able to repeat the question twice with all of the answers in the period of time uh, that folks um, have to fill it out. I was super impressed. I know. He's a champ. He's a professional. He's a professional. We are not. <laughs> we're reading the question That's one not time. True. We're, we're getting good. So before we get to our prediction lock-ins, this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, who provide therapy online. If you experience things like headaches, teeth grinding, and even digestive issues, you might not know that those can be indicators of stress. And let's not forget about doom scrolling, sleeping too little, sleeping too much, undereating, overeating. Stress shows up in all kinds of ways. And in a world that's telling you to do more, sleep less, and grind all the time, here's a reminder to take care of yourself, do less, and maybe try some therapy. We all experience stress, but the good news is that it can be managed with the help of a therapist. When I've spoken with a therapist about stress, they've given me actionable steps and were a critical voice when I was trying to manage my work-life balance. 
BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. I love the text chat feature. It's just very easy to work into my day, and it lets me partake in therapy anytime and anywhere. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy. Give it a try and see if online therapy can help lower your stress. MuggleCast listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash MuggleCast. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash MuggleCast. And the link is also in today's show notes. So turning to our secrets of Dumbledore prediction lock-ins, these will be fun to revisit once the movie is out in just a couple of weeks. And I thought to start... And th- this uh, will get Eric involved here, too. Let's talk about let's predict how well the film is going to perform at the box office. For reference, the first Fantastic Beast movie made seventy four point four million dollars domestically over opening weekends. Crimes of Grindelwald made sixty two point one million in the U.S. over the opening weekend. How much will Secrets of Dumbledore make in the same time frame? This is tough. We're still contending with COVID. Some people are nervous to go out to the theaters. And so my guess, it turns out, I'm looking at the doc, is the lowest of all of ours. But I suspect, also based on anecdotal evidence, Laura, for instance, being the only two tickets in her entire theater for that showing, which is on opening weekend, I'm going to guess that this is going to have the lowest opening domestically overall for opening weekend. And I'm by about 17 million. So I'm guessing $45 million overall for the weekend. Wow. A $17 million drop. Okay. I'm being a little more optimistic, though I don't think it's going to do as well as Grindelwald did with $62.1 million, which, by the way, it was really bad by Harry Potter standards. Um, I'm going to say $55 million. We've seen them really leaning into The Secrets of Dumbledore. We've spoken before about, like, you watch the TV commercials. They don't even say Fantastic Beasts. They just say Secrets of Dumbledore. So they're really banking on OG Harry Potter fans being interested in this movie. I'm hopeful that the title, the marketing, which has been very heavy on Hogwarts, that's going to drive it up higher than what you're predicting, Eric, in my opinion. But COVID's a very valid point as well, and not to mention the whole J.K. Rowling of it all. So $55 is my guess. So I agree with both Eric and Andrew. I think when you look at um, the J.K. Rowling factor, when you look at I don't know that Ezra Miller and his situation is really going to impact much in terms of people going to the box office, but I certainly think there's been so much time to build up the situation with J.K. Rowling that I do think it is going to have an impact, right? We're talking about years since the last film was released. And then Eric, to your point about the fact that people are still nervous to do everyday things and sitting inside of a theater with people they don't know, maybe masks are required, maybe they're not. Um, for you know, two plus hours. Oh, that's something we should ask you too. Is is what the runtime of this film is? I'm not sure that we got that information. Actually, somebody missed. I think it's like two hours twenty. Okay. So anyway, uh, yeah, I I don't see it performing better than either of the first two films, and I'm just above uh, Andrew with with fifty eight million. All right, and I think I'm falling somewhere in the middle here of everyone, um, agreeing. On all of the points raised above, I think between the pandemic uh, and the fact that this franchise has been fraught with negative publicity, um, and also the confusing tone that the last film left a lot of viewers with, I think it's still going to drop. I don't think it's going to drop as far as far as Eric thinks it will, um, but I'm guessing fifty million. Oh boy, I'm nervous. <laughs> so we're gonna do really prices nervous. right. I know who's gonna be yeah. reloading boxofficemojo.com that whole weekend. Yeah, I'm just besides I, me, and I'm not nervous about like being right or wrong. I'm just nervous about like what this is gonna mean for the franchise. Because if it really bombs, like we might truly say goodbye to Fantastic Beasts based on everything we've heard. No, it's true, and that would be a shame. There's still a lot to like, a lot to love actually about some of these performances, and I'd hate to see them go. Yeah. Before their time. My jury is out on how much damage control they can do from the second movie. Mm. There's a lot to clean up there. Definitely. That that's such a big piece of this too, because if you left the last film not feeling fulfilled, 
then what is motivating you to go see Secrets of Dumbledore? Dumbledore, Hogwarts, his <laughs> secrets. <laughs> Nostalgia. We grew up with it. Hogwarts, Harry Potter, Hogwarts, Harry Potter. That's what all of the marketing for this movie feels but like. But this exclusive- You know what, though? Yeah. I'm not sure the marketing is working, at least in some regards. So I told everybody I'm going to go to this fan screening, and uh, it's over in California. So I said to my boyfriend, Pat, come with me. He said, I'm not driving to California just to see this movie. If it was a Harry Potter movie, maybe. And I said, oh, excuse you. Didn't you see the title? Didn't you see the poster? <laughs> there's Hogwarts, there's Dumbledore. This is a Harry Potter movie. WB so badly wants everybody to believe that this is a Harry Potter movie. And it's not working on everybody. <laughs> this, uh, you know, exclusively in theaters is brutal still to my sensibilities. I still find it to be very cold. And, you know, yeah. it's just so obviously still dangerous to go out and see this thing. Have you guys gone to the theater to see movies, though? Like yeah. I have. I haven't. This was my really? exception because it was a free ticket. But I still haven't wow. seen. As a consequence, I still haven't seen the Batman everyone's talking about. And I haven't seen Spider-Man either. Wow. Uh, I'm well, genuinely Spider-Man, shocked. You should be. You can buy that now. Now, right? As of like a week get ago, it on right? demand. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I will say, you know. The Batman has been out long enough, and it really just depends on your comfort. Um, For me, if I can get into a less populated screening, I feel pretty good about that. Um, I will say my one exception to doing like an opening night packed theater experience was Spider-Man. And I did feel kind of weird about doing that, but it ended up being okay. Um, So I think it just depends on your comfort level. And how much enjoyment you're going to be able to get out of the experience, right? The Batman was great, by the way. Oh, good. Laura's willing to catch COVID for Tom Holland. And I completely understand (laughs) why you feel that way. Let's also predict what the Rotten Tomatoes tomato meter will look like by the end of opening weekend. So the tomato meter takes all of the critic reviews into account and comes up with a 1 to 100 average. Again, for reference, Fantastic Beast 1 had a 74% on the tomato meter. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. That's that's not a C. That's a good movie. Uh, Fantastic Beast 2, on the other hand, got a 36%. It was certified <laughs> rotten. <laughs> <laughs> we all know that was deserved. That's half. Yeah, half. Yeah, that's a good point. Half. I'm going into this film, Secrets of Dumbledore, very optimistic. I'm going to say it's going to score close to Fantastic Beast 1, I'm saying it's going to get a 70% on Rotten Tomatoes. There was there were some uh, social media reactions that popped up after Secrets of Dumbledore's premiere, and they were pretty positive overall, with Steve Clovis getting involved writing the script, with probably Warner Brothers really getting involved to make sure it was a satisfying film. I, I really feel like this is going to be markedly better than Crimes of Grindelwald, so 70%. Okay. Um, I'm not going too far below. I'm thinking, you know, having seen the movie, I'm like, well, what will critics think? And this is really not an indicator of anything. I've tried to be as th- I appreciate you giving me all these uh, predictions that could be anything so I, I can participate. Um, but I'm going to guess that uh, the critic meter will say give it about a 60 percent overall on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, okay. Again, back to my spoiler free review. I'm more positive than negative about this film overall. So I think that that represents how I feel. All right. Um, I'm going to be the Debbie Downer here. I see. Oh, um, I'm guessing that it's going to be a 45%. I don't necessarily think that that is reflective of the quality of the movie. Historically, critics have been pretty hard on the the Harry Potter franchise. So I think it's important to take that into account. Um And I think there will probably still be some residual impact from Crimes of Grindelwald. Unfortunately, again, I don't know what this movie can do to completely get itself out of the shadow of that terrible second movie. Um, So I think that it will get some crossover from that. Um, I don't think it's going to be as bad as Crimes of Grindelwald was at uh, 36%. So locking it in at a 45%. I'm slightly more optimistic. Uh, I came up with 57%. I think that there is opportunity here for the movie to improve upon 
Crimes of Grindelwald, just given the fact that it has been so long since that movie was released. Hopefully some of that is forgotten. Uh, I don't know how they're going to kind of recap to allow people to remember at the start of this film, maybe um, the things that have <laughs> happened previously. I think that would probably be a good idea. Uh, and But at the same time, I'm also aware of the fact that I do think external factors play a role, regardless of how good or bad the film may be. And so when we think about all the things that have surrounded this franchise, I do think that some of that will be in the back of critics' minds uh, and impact how they ultimately rate the film. And I do think if they rely too heavily on Hogwarts, I don't know that that necessarily works in their favor um, in, in terms of the favor of uh, the film producers when ultimately these critics do rate it. I think the the, the reason why Fantastic Beasts has a 74% is because it can stand alone by itself. Yes. Because it, yes, it was the introduction to this new series, but I think Fantastic Beasts stands on its own. It was good storytelling. It was fun to watch. The second movie just just didn't land. So I'm interested to see what it did, how the third one performs. I agree. And, and I'll add too, to Micah's point, I feel like there is... There's like a critical point where if we get too much Hogwarts, it's going to feel cheap, right? It's going to feel like, hey, we're giving y'all what you want, right? Hogwarts. And it's going to reach a point where it doesn't feel genuine. Um, Speaking for myself, I can't speak for others. But um, I, again, just want to reiterate that what is the most frustrating to me about this franchise is that they're not sort of like trusting the story to be good enough on its own. They're like really leaning back into Potter. And to me, that signals that they're scared that they don't have a strong enough story to tell by itself, which is what I loved about the first movie. I loved that it was its own thing. Um, And I really just hate that we're name dropping and retconning canon just to make this like weird puzzle piece fit into the established cinematic universe. You know, it's just, it's annoying. That's the thing. It's like Dumbledore was mentioned what once in the first movie. He just got a passing mention. And then it's like the second movie, here's Dumbledore. And all of a sudden the story starts to go in a completely different direction. Just based on all of the Hogwarts that we see in the trailer for Secrets of Dumbledore, if they keep going down this path, movie four is going to feature chasing Grindelwald around Hogwarts. Basically <laughs> different right? Rooms. Right. Like, like the whole thing is set there and he's just, ha ah, you can't get me. No, just I've been kind around. of wondering that too. They're, they're raising the bar to the point where, you know, the marketing is so much about Hogwarts and Dumbledore. Where do you go after this? Because if this is the big draw for this movie, you're going to want to continue that for a fourth or fifth movie. Right. Um, but I will say, I think, we're seeing and hearing a lot of uh, Dumbledore and Hogwarts right now. I doubt we're going to spend a ton of time at Hogwarts in the movie. I kind of see Hogwarts as a home base. Clearly, they're going to be traveling outward. It might feel like it's going to be heavy on Hogwarts because that's just what the marketing is. WB just wants us to buy tickets. It's probably misleading. I hope so. I'm not looking at Eric right now. <laughs> He's oh, got I'm a good poker one of those, face, actually. Yeah. This is a randomized <laughs> reaction. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so getting to these other uh, prediction lock-ins, these more concern the plot. This first one I thought was just a fun question from the Crimes of Grindelwald lock-in episode, so I wanted to include it again. And another reason I wanted to include it again is because I still remember seeing a house elf in uh, Crimes of Grindelwald very early, and I turned to Pat and I was like, ah, uh, my prediction, look at that. It wasn't a joke uh... after all. So how many house elves will we see in this movie? I know it's completely irrelevant, but <laughs> we did predict this with Crimes of Grindelwald. So let's do it again. I'm going to say three. I Five. Okay. I'm going to say two. I think it's just what we saw in the trailer. Were there even two in the trailer? Were there? Maybe There's I'm confusing one. it with the game trailer. Oh. I think I'm confusing it with the game trailer. Oh, yeah, the game actually. trailer, you actually go to like the kitchens and stuff. Kitchens, so I, I can see yeah. the numbers. That's what I thought, because I could see the num the numbers here are pretty high, uh, just in guessing. Mm-hmm. But I remember I don't remember seeing one in the trailer for this movie. I remember seeing in the first movie, 
isn't a house elf tending bar at the speakeasy. Yes. And yeah. that's like the one house elf that's in that movie. There is one elf in the secret of, Secrets of Dumbledore trailer. He's conducting a choir of instruments. Oh, gotcha. He's conducting that's instruments. Right. Yeah. So we know so. it's at least. I'm going to stick with yeah. two. Okay. I'll stick with two. The one we got in the trailer plus a bonus. House elf. <laughs> Maybe Dobby's one we parents. know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Dobby. <laughs> All right, Eric, do you want to ask the rest of these questions? Oh, I'd love to. Yeah, thanks for passing it over to me because I'm no longer guessing. Yeah. Um, we are going to get your thoughts. On a scale of one to 10, guys, how gay will the Dumbledore and Grindelwald stuff be? <laughs> on a scale of one to 10, I guess 10 being full on like... Two, one is like it's not even mentioned. Not even mentioned. Oh, How if ten is if ten is all the, the way, then I yeah. gotta change my answer. Well, what is, what's the gonna... scale here? What are we thinking of? Like, well, what was everybody? I else's? wasn't thinking that, Eric. I was thinking uh, maybe some a uh, kiss, a kiss. That would okay, be a kiss. ten to me. All right, so, so yeah. ten is. Yeah. Gellert plants one on Albus, or Albus plants one on Dumbledore. Okay, that's ten. Yeah. Yeah. So where are we at? I don't think we would see a kiss even in a flashback. So I'm going to say a seven. I think we already know. I mean, we saw in that one trailer commercial that Dumbledore says I was in love with Grindelwald. We've heard, you know, the film is pretty gay. So I'm going to I'm going to say seven. I'm going to say just a lot of open talk about two male. Well, at least one male having feelings for another male, which which is pretty gay by Harry Potter standards, of course, and yeah. really big blockbuster films in general. How often do we see this? This is something to be celebrated. I know there's a lot of uh, baggage attached to Fantastic Beasts, but this is one very good thing. I I agree. I, I'm going with seven. It's it's the most magically powerful number, <laughs> right? It can't go wrong with that choice. Uh, but yeah, look, these two made a blood pact together, right? So that that's at least a five to begin with. Yeah, and then. <laughs> You add in to your point, Andrew. Right, having to explain some it. of the scenes. Yeah, yeah, some of the scenes that we've gotten privy to. Right, they're in the cafe. They're very open in their conversations. We know that they're going. What presumably looks like they're going to battle at some point. Are they able to actually move against each other? There's that hesitation moment. So, yeah, I'm I'm comfortable here saying seven. Yeah, um, I agree with all of the above, and I'm just coming in like a tick lower at a six, um, just because I think that it's going to be mostly alluded to through dialogue i don't think that we're gonna see any like physical um manifestation of this apart from the scene where they're like touching each other's chests or like the memory in the mirror of erised where they're like holding hands i think that's as far as it'll go physically um but we've seen from the released scenes that there's an at least an exp- one explicit i was in love with you moment so i'd give it a solid 6 when dumbledore and grindelwald are at the diner or the taco bell do you think they're playing footsie under the table it's cuz really i think clean for a taco bell that <laughs> That would that would bring it up to an eight. Well, uh, that settles that then. <laughs> well, we shall see. Um, here's an interesting one: Will Jacob and Queenie be back together by the end of this movie? By the end of the third film? No, I don't think they're getting Aww. back together by the end of this movie. I still think if there is more story to tell here, you have to stretch this out a little bit, mm. um, especially given that they didn't really stretch a whole lot of it out. In the second film, it was just like they jumped the shark and all of a sudden, you know, Queenie is um, roofing Jacob on a regular basis and trying to control him. And then all of a sudden she runs off and she joins Team Grindelwald. Um, I also would think that it would be a benefit to have her still uh, working alongside Grindelwald if in fact she is not um, completely turned, right? Having sort of that inside informant uh, is crucial um, to to Dumbledore and the rest of the team. So no, I don't, I don't see them getting back together by the end of this film. And Andrew and Laura, you seem to disagree. I'm hopeful they're going to get together by the end of this movie, or at least they will start to mend the relationship. I have to think that one reason Jacob is on this journey with the uh, Newt's is because they're going to be they're going to try to get Queenie back. 
I mean, they're doing this for Tina, too, right? So I think there's a good chance that they could be back together by the end of this movie. I also feel like from just a storytelling perspective, and again, clean up from the second movie, this, this is maybe one of the easier like story beats to rectify um, so that in the event that this movie does end up being the finale for the franchise, I hope it's not, um, but they do need to tie up at least some of the loose ends in this movie that were created in the second one. And and I really think that Jacob and Queenie are one of the, like their low hanging fruit for that because they, they are fan favorites. People love them. Um, People are invested in their relationship. I would argue more so than some of the other relationships that we see like, represented or not represented um so yeah i think that they'll probably at the very least set them on the path for reconciliation in this film if not have queenie completely reconcile with jacob by the end of the film what i like about queenie's character is when we first started doing our first fantastic beast discussions uh we talked about how like dangerous her s- skills as a legilimens could be for mm. whatever side has her and so it's been interesting to see that kind of play out on top of her relationship with jacob so we'll just have to see yeah and what's interesting about that is we've heard in these these trailers or these featurettes like the plan is to confuse Grindelwald, right? Right. You know, Grindelwald has the ability to see the future and the plan is to confuse him. What better way to manipulate him than with somebody who can actually hear his thoughts? That's a good point. Uh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So on the complete opposite side of the spectrum, will Newt and Tina's relationship begin by the end of the movie? I, I guess we're not counting anything else that happened as beginning their relationship, but will Newt and Tina be uh, going out? No, I don't even know if she's in this movie. These to are be the honest people. These are so, the, hang on. These are the is. characters who canonically have children, marry and have kids that we know about in the future. So it has to happen at some point. But we're saying, look, no, it seemed like they were on the right track at the end of the first film. Right. Things just completely go off the rails in the second film. We see that uh, Newt at least has a picture of her right inside of his briefcase uh, in one of the trailers. So presumably maybe things are on the men, but I, I don't know. Like this seems like another side story to me that I don't know that it's integral to the plot overall. So I, what do we mean by begin though? What what does that mean? Like, are they going to be romantically involved? Are they like seven, le- you know, right. number seven on the scale of Dumbledore and Grindelwald? <laughs> right, like- right, playing footsie under the table. I No, I, so <laughs> like you said, at the end of the first movie, it looked like things were getting started and then that went nowhere in movie two. So I just kind of mean like, will things get started again by the end of the third movie? Yeah. But it does seem like the three of us are all in agreement that no, it won't just because I guess we're all assuming since Tina really doesn't seem to be in this movie too much. Um, how could things get started? It, it seems like she's just going to get a very brief cameo, like just given the fact that she hasn't been in the trailer. Like, so I wonder if it's like a moment where she just kind of pops up at the end of the film and that's yeah. Tina. Don't forget about Thanks me. For she coming. and Newt. She and Newt like smile bashfully at each other, and that's it. That, that's what's exactly gonna happen. salamander eyes. Oh, oh right. <laughs> yeah. Wait, that was in Crimes of Grindelwald, right? Okay, so there was actually a yeah. little yeah. progress on the well, relationship. Well, kind of, because there was that huge un- misunderstanding, right, with the Daily Prophet paper. So then, and right. it ended with her being aware that he actually did like her. But that's like a value neutral in my. That's like a net. I have zero. a question then. Uh, on a scale of one to ten, how explicitly salamander is this movie going to be? <laughs> Ooh, that's a good prediction. Twelve, like, like full on chameleon. <laughs> like, yeah, straight up, cold blooded, whole thing. Here's an interesting one: Will any other Harry Potter characters be name checked who we haven't already heard about? Again, this is a trend. That's why I love this question because it seems very likely that uh, somebody's name that we recognize will be said in this movie. So what do we think? Hmm. I went with Peeves. I think going the ghost route is a safe bet because 
you know that they're probably already there. And I know Peeves is a poltergeist, but I could see, you know, in passing either a Dumbledore or McGonagall or another professor, you know, just saying, oh, Peeves was at it again. He did X, Y, and Z, or maybe Jacob, you know, has an experience with him. I don't know. But yeah, I see, I see Peeves as an easy one to name check. I similarly think a ghost makes the most sense. So how about Professor Bins? I think that would be a very easy one to include. Just somebody mentioning, oh, I have to run off to class with Professor Bins or something like that. Key here is the question is name checked, not necessarily an appearance. I think it could be very easy to throw in a very old teacher in the dialogue just to get some fans excited. So Bins. Mm. Well, you, you missed the casting announcement of Sir Anthony Hopkins as uh, Cuthbert Bins. <laughs> I did <laughs> miss that. Darn. Yeah. Yeah. They announced it the other day. Uh, Laura, what do you think? I think that there is going to be some allusion to Tom Riddle. I don't know that because I don't know exactly what year this movie is taking place yet. Um, But we know that that's presumably where the story is going based on the time overlap. So I don't know if it's going to be a reference to the Gaunts. I don't know if it's going to be a reference to Dumbledore being aware of a boy that was born that's like in an orphanage. There's going to be some sort of illusion. I feel like there has to be um, just because we know based on the timing and based on the fact that we are getting so much Hogwarts in this story that if it would be, it would make no sense if none of that, like the Tom Riddle arc came up at all in this series. So I think we'll get that somehow. I just can't wait to learn that Dumbledore is Voldemort's father. I feel like that's coming <laughs> at some point. Now that's a secret. <laughs> yeah, that would count for two, I think, in terms of secrets of Dumbledore. Um, okay, here's another one I love. Uh, will the Order of the Phoenix be name-checked? Yes. I, I'm jumping in first. I am high on this train. We saw that book in Crimes of Grindelwald. It was flipped through very fast by... Um, uh, Nicholas Flamel, and there it looks like there was a phoenix on the front of it. I think that was the early version of the Order of the Phoenix. Uh, it looks like Lely was a part of this Order of the Phoenix. I think this is a shoe in It better happen. <laughs> I just love this idea. I don't care if it's a throwback to Harry Potter. I just love it. I love seeing an early version of the Order of the Phoenix. The idea of that, anyway. I agree. Um, I think that it's, again, it's like low-hanging fruit. And they're using so much Phoenix imagery in the marketing for this Ooh. film. It's hard to think that there wouldn't be some reference to that. Not to say that the Phoenix imagery is explicitly about the Order of the Phoenix. I don't think it is, but it's a nice tie-in. So, yeah, I think they'll do it. It doesn't help matters that one of the featurettes was what called Dumbledore's first army or something. Yeah, for this that's, film. that's another reason. <laughs> I was why like, I think... wow, like just based on that alone, I would bet probably real money that they're going to name drop or name check the order. I'll uh, I'll take the other side of the argument. I don't think it'll get name checked in full. I don't think you'll hear Order of the Phoenix. You think it'll be like the room we require? It'll be the phoenix that is of order. <laughs> yeah, I think you might hear. I, mean, I think you might hear the order. Me, I, I don't know. The express I, I, to Hogwarts. <laughs> yeah, the very right. orderly phoenix. I think. I think right. it's right that, like, right canonically, the order of the phoenix was formed to defeat Voldemort the first time, right? I think that's what the book says. Are we really going by canonical? <laughs> no, we're not. Because <laughs> McGonagall is fully in these movies. Uh, so, but who's to say he didn't have a network of people bringing, bringing down Grindelwald? Called it the same. So here's a question. Uh, actually, I wrote this one. How many times will recognizably Harry Potter music play during the movie? So we know that the Fantastic Beast has a few themes of its own. Um, you know, really good stuff. But they're in the establishing shot of Hogwarts and Crimes of Grindelwald, they blared the Hedwig's theme and in all the trailers too. So during this movie, how many times will we be able to recognize scores straight up lifted out of the Harry Potter films? Who wants to go first? I'll, I'll go first. I, I think to your point, it depends how many times we see Hogwarts. <laughs> <laughs> you think every time they cut to it, it's going to... I think that would be amazing. Yeah. I'll say three. Okay. To give it a number. All right. 
I'm going to say twice and just Hedwig's theme. So when we go back to Hogwarts, 100% you're going to get Hedwig's theme. I think Hedwig's theme every time we get an establishing shot of Hogwarts, <laughs> um, which I'm guessing is going to be like three to five. <laughs> so three to five times. All right. Those predictions are locked in. Moving forward. Uh, will we get the flashback to the day that Ariana was killed? This is such an important question. This is, this is so a really important. important question. Remember, it was leaked that there was more footage being used of that actress. I just feel like if you're going to do it, this is the time. This is the movie. This is what we've been waiting for. This is what all the marketing has led to. The secret of Dumbledore. It all ends here is what I was thinking about <laughs> when you were talking. <laughs> so I'm going to say yes. We will get the flashback. I'll say no. Uh, and the reason being is I'm thinking back to one of the trailers where there was that conversation, I think it was with Dumbledore and was it Theseus or Newt or both of them. And he's, it's almost like he's starting to tell the story uh, because the portrait of Ariana is in the background. I think we will learn something about what happened. I don't think it'll happen through a flashback. I think it will be through Dumbledore. Yeah. And that, that's why I say maybe. <laughs> um, it, it would make sense to have it, but I'm also thinking about flashback scenes that we've gotten in the other Harry Potter films where if you're a diehard fan and they give you a flashback with like little to no dialogue that doesn't really cement anything, we would understand that. But the average moviegoer would be like, what the heck is going on? I'm thinking about the Snape's worst memory flashback from Order of the Phoenix, um, which if you hadn't read the book, you probably didn't understand. You didn't have the context for what was going on. So I could see something like that. I could see it being alluded to through dialogue. Um, and maybe the footage that they're using of her is just, you know, quick flashback scenes just to show her face. But I don't know that we're going to get a full, fully fleshed out flashback scene. Right. And we, we did have somebody, it was a listener, I think either wrote in or, or sent us a voicemail where they want that. And I, and I kind of agree. I think you did too, Laura, to be kept mm -hmm. intentionally vague. Mm -hmm. Like we don't yeah. want to know explicitly what happened because I think then that puts direct responsibility onto one single person. And I think the fact that it is so open-ended currently is what lends itself to just how painful of a moment this is for Dumbledore. Right? Right. Maybe he doesn't know exactly who is responsible, just that it happened. Right. Right. And that's that's fair. Okay. So maybe a flashback, but you don't go to the moment. You see like the first half of the moment. Yeah. It's not definitive. Yeah. 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 Maybe it still captures the chaos of that moment. So even you, the viewer, like you're saying, Laura, can't tell what what actually happened. The truth. Yeah. I never imagined that we get like a POV camera shot of somebody's wand. We see it attached to the person, then go and hit Ariana. <laughs> like I didn't ex ever expect that would be the case, but it's possible. I think you could get a flashback to the creation of the blood pact and uh, whether or not yeah. those are mm -hmm. intertwined with her being killed is, is a different story. That could happen. So yeah. Speaking of Ariana, here's a vague one. Is Ariana inside Credence? Or I assume this means the Obscurus? Obscurus, or yeah. Is, yeah. Okay, so is Ariana's Obscurus inside Credence now? And I guess when you see Credence in Obscurus form, you could maybe argue that that is Ariana. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. I mean, this has been a popular theory for a while, or some. there have been a couple of different versions of this theory as well. It just seems to make the most sense to me. And when you think about why Dumbledore cares about Credence so much, maybe it's because Ariana... Ariana's Obscurus is inside Credence. This is a theory I, I think I want to come true because it just really helps tie everything together. I think the reason why Dumbledore cares so much about Credence is because he sees a lot of what happened to his sister inside of him, mm. uh, inside of Credence. Uh, I don't think that Ariana is in fact 
inside of Credence. I, I think it's a great fan theory, but at this point, I think it would really overcomplicate the story. I don't think that it's Ariana, um, but I think that probably Ariana and Credence both had the same condition. They both have an Obscurus, and that's kind of where we see Dumbledore come in. In addition to, we're presumably supposed to believe that Credence is a Dumbledore in some way, shape, or form. Um, so that familial connection should be enough to interest Dumbledore. But I think if you add the layer that Credence has the similar condition to what Ariana had, Dumbledore would be invested. Also knowing that someone like Grindelwald intends to use Credence to exploit Dumbledore, right? Mm. Um, Because he's really self-aware about that in the books, right? Like when he talks about, you know, not wanting to sort of like... um, give Voldemort or even Bellatrix what she wants, right? When he was like, Severus, just kill me off because I know Bellatrix likes to play with her food. Right. Don't want that to happen. I know how this is going to go with me because I'm kind of like, I am the prime prize here. So he doesn't want to give Grindelwald anything extra to hold over his head, given the fact that there's already the established romantic relationship they had previously he doesn't want to give him anything else so i think that's probably the connection but we'll see i i really like that because you know and especially if he's already seen grindelwald do this to one family member Mm -hmm. and it destroyed his sister presumably if credence is his brother he doesn't want to see the same fate for him um Yeah. And I also like what you brought up about how this could be a familial thing, right? Where Ariana has an Obscurus, Credence has an Obscurus. Presumably, again, they're both Dumbledores. It just could be something that, I don't know if it's genetic or, you know, we know how Obscurus form, but it seems like both of these characters have undergone very kind of extreme circumstances in their lives that have created th- these types of beings inside of them. So you guys don't think that what makes Credence a Dumbledore or part Dumbledore as Grindelwald claims is the fact that he ha- may have Ariana's Obscurus? No. I There's a question a little bit later on about whether or not Credence is a Dumbledore. Oh, okay. Um, so we'll maybe get, we can talk we'll get to that then. about it. We can dig it. in further. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, on that note, we do have some more predictions. But first, I have to tell you about an amazing service called FrameBridge, our second sponsor this week. FrameBridge makes it super easy and affordable to frame your favorite things from art prints and posters to the travel photos sitting on your phone. And with Mother's Day around the corner, FrameBridge also makes the perfect gift. In fact, select gifts ship next day. Here's how it works. Just go to FrameBridge.com and upload your photo. Or they'll send you packaging to safely mail in your physical pieces, like a diploma or anything else you want to frame. Preview your item online in dozens of frame styles and gallery wall layouts. Choose your favorite or get free recommendations from their talented designers. The experts at FrameBridge will custom frame your item and deliver your finished piece directly to your door, ready to hang. Instead of the hundreds you'd pay at a framing store, their prices start at $39 and all shipping is free. Plus, our listeners will get 15% off their first order at FrameBridge.com when they use our code MUGGLE. Order online at FrameBridge.com or stop by a FrameBridge store to work with a designer in person if you're in New York, D.C., Atlanta, Philly, Boston, or Chicago. I'm lucky to live in a very scenic region. I love going on hikes and taking photos. So I've been using FrameBridge to bring some of my favorite photos out of the digital world and onto my walls. It's very easy to upload your photos, and they have tons of framing options, so you can find something that matches your tastes. They also have accessories for the frames, like you can add an engraving to your frame, which I think is really cool. Get started today, frame your photos, or send someone the perfect gift. Go to FrameBridge.com and use promo code MUGGLE to save an additional 15% off your first order. Just go to FrameBridge.com, promo code MUGGLE. That's FrameBridge.com, promo code MUGGLE. All right. So our next lock-in. There's been much said about this question. Yeah. It is a heavy-hitting question. What is the deal? 
with Jacob's Wand. We've spoken so much about Fisher this. Price, baby. Yeah, Fisher <laughs> Price is the TLDR on this. It's a very basic wand that can do the most basic of tricks given to Jacob by Dumbledore to give the appearance that he's a wizard out on the field. It sounds dangerous, by the way, but that's Dumbledore for you. So um, that that's my guess. I agree. I, th- I think it's a way to protect Jacob and make sure that he fits in with this community because let's face it, without it, he's completely defenseless. I mean, he's still defenseless to some extent with this wand because he doesn't probably really even know how to use it. But to be without anything to protect him in the situations that he's going into here, I think that um, would be very reckless on the part of Dumbledore. Um, So I think he's doing him a solid, giving him a wand. And like you said, Andrew, it, it does the basics. I think if anything, it is charmed to mimic whatever magic is going on around it to further lend the appearance that Jacob is a wizard and make him look like he's fitting in. So perhaps if he's in a space where there is a battle happening or a fight of some sort, his wand will kind of mimic in appearance the magic that's being done around him. But I don't think that it actually does anything. This makes sense to me because muggles can't do magic with wands. They can't shoot spells, but they can hold magical objects. There's no reason why they couldn't. Yeah. Here's another question. Will somebody in the Fantastic Five die? Who's in the Fantastic Five here? Is it? Obviously, like the core four and then Dumbledore or. Well, I wouldn't even I'm talking about the Fantastic Five in this movie. So Newt, Jacob, Yusuf, Laley, Bunty, right? That's that's the dream team in this one. Not missing anybody. I'm not counting Dumbledore. Theseus. Oh, Theseus. Theseus. So Fantastic Six. Damn. Have I been counting this? The sexy six. The sexy six. (laughs) The Scamander (laughs) six. Oh, yeah. My prediction is no. I have maintained that Jacob will die at some point, but I just don't think this is the movie where that's going to happen. I don't think anybody's going to die in this one. Somebody will eventually in this group. Yeah, I I think allegiances will be tested um, amongst some of these characters. Uh, I think probably the most notable, at least from what we've seen from the trailer, is, is Yusuf. It seems like he ventures over to the dark side. Uh, but, uh, no, I, I agree. I, I think all of these characters will, will survive this movie. Same. I don't think this is the movie where anyone gets killed off. Uh, like Andrew, I do think Jacob is going to die, but not in this movie. There seems to be a theme with you, Laura, too, where you just feel like this movie is going to clean up a lot of stuff. So they can't do anything as bold as killing another character. Yeah, exactly. They can't rock the boat too much here. Um, This needs to be a more straightforward story, which it seems like from the marketing and the trailers is what we're getting, right? It's, you know, destroying the blood pact and stopping Grindelwald from doing whatever it is it shows him doing in the trailer, right? Um, So it's, it's a lot more straightforward than like the wizards are on a boat and like the babies got switched and... (laughs) One of them went in the water, and we don't know which one it really was. This is going to be a much more straightforward story. At least I hope so. Ginny Antonic, who's listening live on our Patreon right now, said, Forget canon, Dumbledore dies in this movie. <laughs> 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 Can you imagine? Oh, my God. That'd be so great. And is reborn from the ashes. Or from Creed's <laughs> uh, Obscurus. And, or something. and when he's reborn, he's suddenly so much older. And that explains oh, why that's, he gets. That's why in, in eight years time, he's Michael Gambon. Yeah. The quote unquote young Michael Gambon in Half-Blood Prince. <laughs> it all yeah. makes sense now. <laughs> oh, my God. So the Sexy Six, or the sorry, the Scamander Six did not include Credence. Our next question is, will Credence die slash be written out by the end of this movie? unanimously we think yes yep yeah for a couple reasons for me first of all the actor ezra miller they've gotten themselves into trouble recently and it's not the first time unfortunately just recently ezra was arrested in hawaii after getting in a fight at a bar they were put in jail they posted bail 
And after Ezra got out, they broke into the hotel room of the person who they had gotten in a confrontation with at the bar and threatened them. And this wasn't the only trouble Ezra got into just last month. There were 10 other police calls about Ezra. And of course, as some of you probably know, this isn't the first time Ezra's gotten in trouble in recent years. And we know that WB is trying to wash away the problems associated with the Fantastic Beasts franchise. So I see the studio eager to write out Ezra. And probably the filmmakers are eager too to do that. Then you consider that Credence is just a very troubled character and you add in that it looks like Dumbledore and Credence duel in this movie, according to the trailer. It just seems to me like he's teed up to be written out. Yeah, I I also think that Credence, not even thinking about Ezra Miller, right, but Credence as a character, I think presents a problem (laughs) to the story they're trying to tell, which is that there was this kind of Hollywood ending presented to us. The big reveal at the end of the last movie was he's actually a Dumbledore. And they're going to have to spend much of this movie resolving whatever it is that was supposed to mean, whether it was a lie, whether it was a misdirect, whether it's actually true. Um, And they have to get this part of the story off the table so they can focus on Grindelwald. Right? Because it it just divides the viewer's attention in too many directions to be like, well, there's like conflict, like there's there's conflict like with the B, big C, which is Grindelwald. And then there's like the mini conflict, which is Credence. And I think they have to get the, that one off the table. Yeah, I I think, you know, Dumbledore really seems to need a motivating factor to move against Grindelwald. And clearly, you know, he's lost his sister to lose somebody who's presumably his brother on top of that, I think would be enough to make him move against Grindelwald finally. Um, I do feel also like Credence's story is at a point where it needs conclusion, right? This is an ongoing thing since the first film, you know, to try and get him to a point where he can have the help and assistance that he needs. But he's made the decision clearly um, in the last film to go team Grindelwald. So I can't imagine that his state of mind is very good. Um, I think there's probably a lot of inner conflict for him. I just, I don't see him honestly surviving this film. I think he is somebody that he will be like the main character that goes in this in this movie. Oh, huh. so there will be a major death. Interesting. Just not from the sexy six. Not the sexy six. <laughs> Unless, of course, they bring him back in the fourth film, which right, you know, right. he's like the Michael Myers of oh, yeah. the Fantastic Beasts Can series. never die. <laughs> yeah. 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 Which would they would have to explain why he's not in any of the Harry Potter books then. So here are, we only have a few questions left. What beast or beasts will be the MVP of this movie uh, as in most con- most contributing to the defeat of Grindelwald or like just MVP of the story. What do we think? Well, when, when you say MVP, like I think of like, you have a smile on your face in certain moments. And if the trailer is any indication, I would go the Teddy Pickett route. <laughs> um, those are obviously beasts. We already and the know. poster. Yeah, those are beasts that we're we're already very familiar with uh, in this series. Um, but there are others that we've talked about that we've seen in the trailer. I would assume the the Keelan mm. um, is is of vast importance um, to the plot. But yeah, in terms of MVPs, I got to go with the uh, the old school Niffler and Bowtruckle combo. I was sort of imagining like you know during the grand finale. A moment right up there with with Neville slaying the Gini, like that type of moment <laughs> to just Ooh. solve everything. So, um, yeah, I could see Teddy or Pickett uh, being part of that grand finale moment. I I wanted to go a different route though, so I said the Demi guys because they can see the immediate future. So a Demi guys could always be helpful, and uh, I really like those things. They're super adorable. Yeah, and Newt's Demi guys has a name, Dougal. Oh yeah, right, yeah. 
So the, Aww, the, Nif- the I know the Niffler got an upgrade because they named him Teddy in this film, and let's not forget that the Demi guys already had a name. So, um, so I'm gonna go with the Phoenix, just great because guess. we do. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen <laughs> that poster? See <laughs> yeah, we we see it so much in all of the marketing, um, but I think in one of the um promotional videos they put out in an interview with Ezra Miller. Ezra was saying that they feel like the Phoenix is trying to help Credence in some way. Um, so I could see if the Phoenix has some plays some role in destabilizing Credence so that Grindelwald can no longer use Credence as a tool, that that might kind of put a, like throw a monkey wrench into the middle of Grindelwald's plans. So I'm going to give it to the Phoenix. Love it. Okay. Here's a question that I love. Uh, Oh, I think I put this in here too. How many secrets, (laughs) how, how many secrets of Dumbledore will we learn about specifically? Keep in mind, we went through the entire crimes of Grindelwald and I could not name you one crime (laughs) that Grindelwald did. So how many secrets of Dumbledore, like what will we learn in number form, uh, what do we think? Well, I'm bringing a little notepad and I'm going to be jotting down all of these Thank secrets you. that were being promised. Yeah, I'll keep a little tally. That's a one. Yeah. That's a two. That's a three. Yeah. Uh, my guess is, okay, the title is plural, so it's got to be more than one. And I oh, really hope that these are secrets that we, the fans, don't know yet. Please, you got to give it to us. So I'm going to say three genuine secrets that the fans do not know. I like it. So I'm thinking about, like Andrew, I'm thinking about secrets in addition to the ones that we already know about. So Dumbledore being gay does not count as a secret reveal. (laughs) Um, Dumbledore having a former romantic relationship with Grindelwald as a secret does not count. Um, The conflict with Ariana does not count. We know about all those things. So I think above those secrets, we might get one to two. Okay. But they have to be pretty major. Now I'm thinking... For it to feel impactful. Yeah, that's interesting. If you cut out all the ones we already knew, I'm really thinking we're going to need a whole MuggleCast episode counting how many secrets we learn about in this <laughs> film. <laughs> so what were ruling the out... secrets of Dumbledore? Yeah. I see the episode title now. Right. <laughs> I think it really does depend on whether or not we're applying secrets to the entire Dumbledore family versus just, let's say, Albus. Yeah, mm. yeah. I think there's going to be at least one, uh, I hope. Um, Eric, you kind of swayed me. I was going to go with zero until you <laughs> reminded me that in Crimes of Grindelwald, <laughs> there weren't really many crimes, if any, that were um, kind of front and center. So I was going to go with zero, but then I figured, okay, Steve Clovis came in. I, I must feel have like, at least yeah, improved upon. If he did one uh, thing, the title of this make film, the title make sense, right. please. Yeah, so I'm going to go with at least one kind of big secret reveal that we didn't see coming. Okay, and then back to Credence theory. Uh, will we learn that Credence is not Aurelius? Dumbledore. Uh, we don't talk about this much anymore, but this, of course, was the biggest question at the end of Crimes of Grindelwald. That was the big twist. That was the big moment. And I, I want to believe that Grindelwald was telling the truth. Why lead us down this path for years? And they knew it was going to be at least a two-year wait in between movies. Why lie to the fans about this at the very end of the movie? Why make this big deal out of it so i've maintained from the beginning since the very first time we reviewed this that grindelwald was telling the truth i know a lot of people disagree with this but for the sake of being right a few years ago i want to still believe that grindelwald was telling the truth maybe there's gonna be you know some little asterisks next to it but i think to at least some extent this is the truth so i've thought on this a little bit uh, and and I was originally in the camp of Grindelwald being completely full of it. Um, I, I don't think that you can trust him. I think he has an agenda. And that said, given that this was such a big reveal, though, Andrew, to your point, I do think that Credence is Aurelius Dumbledore, but I think there's a lie in there somewhere. 
I don't fully trust Grindelwald in the fact that, let's just say, he's Albus's brother. Like, I, I feel like there's something that is off in what he's telling him that allows him to then achieve his own goals in, in revealing this information. Um, but I, I agree it'd be too much of a reveal for it not to be true. So I, I believe it's like half and half, like half is truth, half isn't, if that makes sense. Yeah. I remember at the time thinking that Grindelwald had to be lying to Credence because of course that hearing that is exactly what Credence wanted to hear, right? Credence wanted to know that he was special somehow, that he was different. And I thought that this was maybe Grindelwald's way of trying to play into that weakness. Um, but with the amount of time that has passed, it really wouldn't make sense for them to completely scrap this um, plot point. So I agree with Micah that I think he is Aurelius Dumbledore. Um, I just don't think that Credence is a Dumbledore brother. All right. Will the blood pact be destroyed by the end of the movie? Another big moment from the end of Crimes of Grindelwald. Dumbledore was wondering if if he can destroy it. I'm going to say yes. And I think this is going to be one of the big moments uh, at the end of the movie, that the, uh, the blood pact being destroyed. So then finally Dumbledore can move against Grindelwald in the next movie. Yep. Agree. Okay. <laughs> like a big story beat mikey you agree i'm i'm on board okay yeah i'm on board with this i i think you have to like <laughs> if you don't destroy the blood pact by the end of this movie what, what are you doing we're gonna find out that the blood <laughs> pact is actually a dumbledore as well oh my God. Right. <laughs> it's made of goat's blood uh. <laughs> it's whiskey the goat I wanted to also just check in with everybody. Are there any crackpot theories that we believe to be true? I recently thought maybe Ariana is inside Fox at this point of the story. But I'm just thinking, like, why is a phoenix so prominent in the marketing other than to catch the eye of Harry Potter fans? I think it'd be kind of cool if Ariana, maybe Ariana's Obscurus, is somehow within Fox. I don't know. I just want to get that out there in case I'm right. <laughs> yeah. I think the second film did Lita so dirty that I want to see Lita is still alive, that the flames didn't in fact kill her, but that it was sort of a transportation thing because everybody else transported once they went through. And I'd like to see that Lita is in fact still alive and being kept by Grindelwald for reasons unknown. And that was, that's my prediction from before I saw the film. Uh, that's, my biggest crackpot theory going out of movie two is they can't have really done that with Lita. <laughs> Throw uh, Graves in there too. Yeah. yeah. I want to see Graves and Lita in a cell in Nurmengard get out, like, <laughs> conspire and get out. One of the other, I don't know if you consider it a crackpot theory, but we talked about it is Bunty actually Tina. Yeah. Yeah. And Polyjuice. Or is Tina form. Bunty, however you want to yeah. look at it, yeah. using Polyjuice. Tunty, Bina. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Tunty. I've also heard uh, a theory that Tina is actually just in Newt's suitcase the entire movie. <laughs> oh, a beast herself. <laughs> okay, so we also asked our supporters on our Patreon at patreon.com slash mugglecast to make their own Secrets of Dumbledore prediction. And we're going to lock those in as well by reading them here on air. Gabriella said, Jacob's wand is being remotely controlled by Dumbledore because he can't go with them. <laughs> That'd be funny. Dumbledore <laughs> like sitting in a little studio, playing with a joystick, <laughs> sending off the spells. Veronica said, Tina is pregnant. I know everyone wants to see the relationship unfold, but truth be told, with time jumps, we need to get their relationship going. They can't still be shy and awkward after years have passed. I'm predicting they're happily married and have a little scamander on the way. Aw, little scamander. <laughs> Sian has a theory about Jacob's wand. I think perhaps it could have been bewitched by Dumbledore to specifically respond to the love that Jacob feels for Queenie. This fits for me because Dumbledore has to have seen some real examples of love being all powerful to support his understanding by the original Harry Potter timeline and also why he would be open to having a muggle on the team. Everyone Dumbledore trusts tends to have a specific purpose for him. And I think this is Jacob's. I love that a lot. Yeah, so Jacob's love controls his wand. 
Here's one from Dave that might scare this panel. Some form of time travel will be involved and shown to be a factor in the series overall plot. Oh, no. <laughs> Laura's like, no. Please, no. You're right, <laughs> Please, Dave. No. We're terrified. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah. Kimberly said, Queenie dies, making Jacob not really important to the story going on, but he stays a friend to Tina and Newt through their relationship. Queenie dying. That's a good one, actually. Just thinking of her current position and what that would mean for Jacob. Doris said, Credence's phoenix is not really a phoenix. The phoenix is not what it seems. Okay. Julianne said, we see a Dumbledore and Grindelwald love scene, or at the very least, a steamy kiss between them either in real time or a flashback. Yeah. That would push this movie up to the 10 on the scale. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Do we think it's going to be Jude and um, Mads or their younger If, it, if it was still Johnny Depp, I would say, please, God, no, not Jude Law and Johnny <laughs> Depp. But now that it is Mads, I'd be more interested in that. But I ultimately, I think the flashback, because Grindelwald, cr- present, Grindelwald never, this was unrequited love, right? So- I don't, I'm not even sure we would yeah. get a kiss ever, but mm, eh, maybe young Grindelwald would <laughs> experimenting in his young age. <laughs> yeah. You know what? It was, it was a summer fling, yeah. you know, yeah. it was for the greater good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ashley said, Jacob has a bun in Queenie's oven. I like that. Nice baker joke. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Wouldn't the kid have already been born, though? Like, how many years later are we at this point? Oh, it's a we don't question. know. We don't know. But I, ne- never mind. I, I think at say, some like, point that it, is happening, though. Yeah. They're crossing. Yeah, but yeah. my point, yeah, conception would have had to have happened before she decided to go join Team Grindelwald. In which and case, presumably it's, it would have happened under the influence of the love potion. Maybe their child mm, ends up being Voldemort. Oh. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, the twist of all twists. Uh, okay, Jeff says, I think this movie is going to get the series back on track. Some of the silly movieisms aside, it will be enjoyable and ensure the series continues, but it still won't resolve the question of whether it's a B-series or a more Potter-era leaning series. I like that. I like that one. Back on track. It's the name of the game this time around. Morgan said this movie will be better than the first Fantastic Beast movie thanks to Steve Clovis. He'll save the Wizarding World brand and become the new head of storytelling, ousting J.K. Rowling. Oh, this is a, this is a good one. Original stories with Clovis at the helm will be announced, similar to what Dave Filoni and John Favreau have done for Star Wars. Very smart theory, Morgan. I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. I do too. Katie said the Beast will only be featured in the climax or as comedic effect. Yeah. Chelsea said J.K. Rowling and co. will blow up at least two more pieces of Wizarding World canon you didn't see coming. (laughs) And then the emoji of the happy laughing face and a bomb. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Brittany said, unpopular opinion. I hope Jacob has magic and a real wand. Karen said the wand given to Jacob is to serve as a disguise for him being a muggle traveling in wizard dominated areas full of Grindelwald fanatics. Amanda said the tie is magical. I think she's referring to uh, Theseus's tie. I'm not sure what it does, but I think it's somehow important or useful. <laughs> Kyle said John Cena will play a young Hagrid. <laughs> <laughs> I see it. Oh, my God. <laughs> and finally, Karina said my prediction is that Credence is not Albus Dumbledore's brother. For me, the whole scene and its wording felt too much like it wanted to lead us on a wrong track. So that's all the opinions, all the predictions we received from our patrons. Awesome. I, I do have one final question for us because we talked about the Harry Potter music, but how many Harry Potter references do you think we're going to get in this film? What does that mean, though? Does like Quidditch what, count? Well, like Hogwarts, McGonagall, Quidditch. Um, I'm sure there's other things that yeah, will come Hogwarts up throughout houses. the course of the movie. Right, because we... in the, one of the trailer lines, Dumbledore says three Slytherins points to giving Jacob cockroach clusters. Is it fair to call these references to Harry Potter if we know Quidditch has existed long before Harry's timeline? When yeah. the player looks like Harry Potter flying on his broom, <laughs> I think I it's think, fair. I don't think he looks like Harry Potter. It's How hard to quantify a side what's by a side. reference. Yeah. Maybe reference isn't the right word. Maybe nostalgia is, Mm -hmm. which is weird because these movies happened many years in the future. So it's not really nostalgia. It's, I'm not sure what you call it. 
I think it's fair to refer to anything that happens at Hogwarts that was like a staple of Harry's Hogwarts experience counts as a Harry Potter reference. So references to the houses, to the assumption that all Slytherins are baddies. We already see that being built up. The Room of Requirement, McGonagall being there, even though she shouldn't be there. I I think there will be quite a few. The Hogshead. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that would count. Okay, this makes sense now. Okay, so everything is locked in. (laughs) So if you have any feedback about today's discussion, you can write to us, uh, mugglecast at gmail.com. You can also send a voice memo to that email address. You can also call us. Our number is 19203-MUGGLE. That's 19203684453. Or you can go to mugglecast.com and write to us through the contact form. By the way, next week, Quizich Live, Fantastic Beast Edition. Uh, we'll be quizzing everybody on the events of the Fantastic Beast franchise so far. And of course, there's going to be questions about the beasts themselves. This is a free Harry Potter trivia game. You can play online against fellow MuggleCast listeners and you can win cash, baby, to see Secrets of Dumbledore. And we'll also match that cash amount with a donation to a charity that you choose from our list. So again, that is Saturday, April 9th at 11 a.m. Eastern. We hope to see everybody there. More details on our social media channels. All right, it's time for Quizage. Last week's question, why doesn't Bellatrix intervene in Dumbledore's fight against Voldemort in the Ministry? It is not as listener Petunia suggested, she's pregnant, duh. <laughs> uh, what about she's answer. watching her man in action? Does that uh, and count? it's not as Whiskey de Goat says, because she's busy. <laughs> um, <laughs> busy with what? <laughs> but the correct answer is that the statue of the witch from the Fountain of Magical Brethren pins her down. Or the movie version is that she uh, goes through the flu network um, unintentionally. So congratulations. I thought she's afraid when Dumbledore shows up. That's why she pieces out in the movie. Uh, Congrats to Booba Tuber Puss, Buff Daddy, DMs and Dragons podcast, Greta Letta, I Heart Andrew, Landon, Legalized Gillyweed, I know, Mandraka, Pata, Smushed Golden Snidget, Squidward Tennis Balls, The Missing Tina, The Potter Discussion, Thunder Ravenpuff, and King of Kings. Uh, oh, also an annoying platform fraction. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Good names as always, everybody. Oh, so great. Here is next week's Quizage question. James Newton Howard, composer of the Fantastic Beasts film series, also composed the music for the film adaptations of this young adult post-apocalyptic fiction book series, which was once marketed as the next Harry Potter. I think I know that one. Submit your answer to us over on the MuggleCast website, MuggleCast.com slash Quizich. Fill out the form and we will get it. If you enjoy MuggleCast, if you want to support us, we would appreciate a review in whatever podcast app you use if they allow you to leave reviews. Spotify recently added a little review system, so we would appreciate a review if you use Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. Thanks, everybody. Also, make sure you're following the show for free in your favorite podcast app. And to help this show thrive, we would love your support at patreon.com slash MuggleCast. You'll get so many benefits. Years of bonus MuggleCast installments await you. Behind the scenes looks at the show. You get access to our recording studio. You get ad-free MuggleCast. You get physical gifts. Lots there. Check it all out. Patreon.com slash MuggleCast. That's it. Thanks, everybody, for listening. I'm Andrew, still at platform three and one third or whatever it was. I'm Eric. I'll see you guys on the other side. Uh, Micah. And I'm Laura. Jury's still out on how this movie's going to be. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. I can't wait to see Aberforth. <laughs> <laughs>